Hey, it's Wednesday, and I'm Brendan, aka Twister Witch, and I'm here this week subbing for Eric. So let's get into our topic. Okay, so Silver Raven Wolf is the topic we have this week, and you need to watch Monday and Tuesday's videos from Annie and Kara because you girls pretty much hit the nail on the head, and it was fantastic. Following that up is going to be a bit difficult, and thank you for that. So pretty much, Silver Raven Wolf, when I started practicing, you were either a Silver Raven Wolf reader, a Scott Cunningham reader, or a Fiona Horn reader. I'm not sure if you're all familiar with Fiona Horn, but she's an Australian author that... I know that she lives in the US now, and I'm not sure if she, her, big, her books are that big over there, but she was one of the three that you would start reading when you started practicing. So I started when I was about 15 or something, and yeah, they were the books. My friend used to, she was always reading the uh, Silver Raven Wolf to, like, to write a silver broomstick to stir a magic cauldron, and I think it's to light a sacred flame, which is the third one. and. She was always reading those, and it was kind of the gateway step in sort of books to the start the practice. And um, I personally was reading Scott Cunningham to start out, but I do own one Re Silver Raven Wolf book, and I've read a couple of the others, but it was a very long time ago. The others, but the one that I do own is the Silver's Guide or Silver's Book to of Protection Spells, and that's probably one of my actually favourite books because. As opposed to what Kara was saying about insta spells and insta magic, um, I quite enjoy those because they're kind of fun little instant sort of spells things. Uh, I don't really have to worry about doing too much work with them. <laughs> yeah, I'm not lazy, I swear, but sometimes you just kind of want that, and it's kind of great because easily laid out. And she does write in the front of the book about talking about like magical practice and all that sort of stuff, so it does help you there, and it's a great little step into all of it. So it's like your little tasting platter of what witchcraft and magic is. And for that, um, I just remember when I started practicing, I loved all the instant spells. Like one of my favorite ones was to a spell to deter your teacher or make your teacher not see you because you haven't done your homework, which I might as well just share with you because I quite like it. And I don't remember where it's from. So yeah, if you know, please comment below. But um, I remember called, I think it was just the instant, Invisi spell, Invisi spell, that's it. It was always in my book of shadows. So, um, God and Goddess, hear my need and understand why I must plead for magic shafts of astral light to hide me from the teacher's, te uh, teacher's sight. I haven't done the work you see, so please don't let them pick on me. Guide them to a mind so bright, I'm sure they'll find the answer right. And yeah, that was one of my favorite little spells when I was started practicing. And it was things like that that I know Silver Raven Wolf's books have. And it's those little things that, to this day, I still use that spell and I rewrite it. And other ones like healing spells and lights, um, spells to make the lights go green. Uh, are, like, they're all the things that I associate with Silver Raven Wolf. And sure, my, my learning and practice has deepened a lot then, but they, it's the foundations I had when I started. So it was a guide to my path, kind of. And now that I... If I was to go back and look at those books again, I don't know how I'd react. Maybe I should do this after this. I might go track down some of the books and have a read through and see what they're all about. And I don't think I ever read any because I know there was mentioned that um, she does some Christian bashing or something, or she's not um, so welcoming of Christians in her books. But everyone has their own personal opinion. She may have had um, history or issues with um, particular people from the Christian faith, so we can't really judge on that. I don't know her personally to say that, oh, she's got this history of here and this, but it's pretty much whatever influenced her life kind of influences her opinion. And the same way that I can allow this say Silver Raven Wolf has influenced my life and my path. And many other people that have been practicing for a very long time can say the same thing. And whether you hate her or love her, it doesn't really matter because you formed an opinion on her and she's made a mark on your life. So you can't not judge her on the fact that she has influence. And it's one of those people that if you say Silver Raven Wolf, most people will be like, oh yeah, I know who she is. Or, oh, her books. Or, oh yeah, I read 
to write a silver broomstick and it was amazing and yeah it's those sort of things that kind of really put the influence on people but I think if you were to go through and do um if we had a week where we had to talk about the other hosts on this show I think it'd be quite interesting because you kind of get more of an opinion here if you watch their personal channels as well but we're all individuals we're all witches we're all or witches or whatever title you want to call yourself um we're all different and that's the whole point. We're all going to get different things out of different books at different times in our lives. You may go back, like read a book when you start practicing. It may have been the most profound book that you've ever read. You go back and read it now and you're like, oh, that was it. Oh, I wonder what happened. And, or you might read one of a book ages ago and be like, oh yeah, that book was crap. But you go back and read it now and you just have this, you're in a state where there's certain parts of the book that are profound and speak to you about it. But yeah, I think opinion is, should be fluid, it shouldn't be something that's set in stone, and it should be able to shift and change, because there's going to be influences and factors that change that all the time. But yeah, that's pretty much my stuff about Silver, and I want to pick up Kara's little rant about Llewellyn, because I love Llewellyn, and I've got friends that have books published through Llewellyn, and it's a great source to have access to it, and the plethora and amazingness that comes out of that like publishing company, and They've been around for such a long time, but I also support all the little um, publishing companies that try to get books out there as well, because it's so hard in this world now where we're going from ele like from wonderful hard-covered books and soft and like yeah paperbacks and all that sort of stuff, and it's like I love the smell of a new book to things like the Kindle and all that sort of stuff. I think if they can incorporate scents in it to a like you had the option for like a musky book smell or like a fresh book smell, I think it would make it more experience, but reading books for me is the whole experience of it. It's like the texture of the paper, um, glossy pictures, if they've got them, um, descriptions, artwork, all that sort of stuff that, and physically holding a book and feeling, it's kind of like the weight of knowledge that comes with a book that I really love. And for Llewellyn to keep publishing books, I'm totally up for it and hopefully I'm over in the when I'm in the uh, when I'm in the US later this year if I get a chance I want to go check out the Llewellyn office because my friend who I'm going with has a few books through there and it would be amazing to go check it out because yeah I think it'd just be incredible but yeah so pretty much um I think that's it on the topic oh and we did have the in the question if we're doing anything as a little side extra that Kara put in there if we're doing anything for upcoming Sabbath and I am I'm going to um, cause it's flipped seasons here, so we're celebrating Lunasa, or Lunasa, however you want to say it, and catching up with our sister coven, and our two combined covens are doing work together, and then we're going to another friend's coven, um, that night, so we're having pretty much all the Saturday is going to be, um, Lunasa, magic, awesomeness, and, oh, one other thing, last night, I got to play with a small group of friends, um, the World Drum. I will post a link down below. Check it out. It's been played by, um, Obama and the Dalai Lama and all these different world leaders and all these shamanic groups and everything. And it's incredible. <laughs> it's amazing. And I'm still buzzing from all of it last night and playing that feeling the resonance of the earth was incredible. So yeah, um, opportunities always take up awesome opportunities and don't live in regret. That's pretty much my lesson for this week. But yeah, uh, much love to all you guys. Uh, many, many blessings and much hugs. And I will see you probably in subs week if I'm not up here beforehand. And thank you, Eric, for letting me make a video in your space for you this week. So bye, guys. See ya.